I'm Christopher Arsaga. And I'm Neri Lemus. We're so glad you can join us. So Neri, uh, so people can have a better idea of who we are and what we do, give them a little intro. Well, we're the two agents. Uh, we're two agents that are based out of Los Angeles. We own a uh, celebrity appearance group called CelebWorks, and we're kind of the guys that are responsible for bringing many of your childhood heroes to a convention that takes place near you. Um, our show is going to be discussing weekly events that take place in our Comic Con community. We're discussing a lot of hot topics, and we have a lot of planned stuff uh, ahead. Whether it's event promoters coming on, respected agents, beloved celebrities and other special upcoming announcements in the next few weeks. Also, if you guys have any interesting questions you'd like to ask us, uh, we'll try to get to them at the end of the show. But before we go into the reason why we're all here, we kind of have to address the elephant in the room. Many people have asked us our thoughts on the current situation, uh, COVID-19, uh, that's devastating the nation. Um, we actually, you know, as CelebWorks, we, we always want everybody to be safe, uh, you know, follow all the guidelines that everybody's put forward to you, you know, that the CDC has put out. We want you all to, to stay home. Uh, don't go out. Don't go into public spaces. Um, make sure that, you know, you're washing your hands. Uh, mine are extremely clean, by the way. So if you see me touch my face, don't freak out. Um, I do that a lot, but I'm like also a crazy, crazy like hand person. Like I have a, a little bit of the OCD for my hands. So if you actually meet me in person and I actually shake your hand, that means I'm giving you the biggest compliment that I am actually shaking your hand because I do freak out. Nuri, Nuri can, Nuri can back it. up on it's this true. one. It's true. It's true. I know. Totally. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and guys, it's, you know, this is a weird time we live in and, you know, it's, there's things that we're going to have to do in the future sort of to take, you know, proactive measures in terms of keeping our clients safe and keeping you guys safe. And unfortunately it's infected our entire industry from, you know, the people that are the staffs of these shows to the promoters, to people that basically are independent contractors for the weekend, trying to make a little money during, you know, um, and agents like us, you know, there's respected agents that are our friends all over that are struggling with sort of this idea of when we're getting back to our jobs. And, you know, a lot of people ask us, you know, what is your opinion on it? Uh, you know, we've had people tell us, you know, stay strong. And But I, I think that we would be doing you a disservice that if we came on here and didn't share our feelings and really tell you that, yeah, we're, we're disappointed. We're a little bit worried. But I feel that if we all stay strong, and our community stays strong and we support every show that you know you guys love out there uh we'll we'll get through this i mean i'm hoping that in the next few months we'll be all back on the road we'll see you guys at a show near you and a lot yep. of our celebrities you know we we just can't wait to we can't wait to get back on the road we all miss you know the guys miss you the fans and uh is there anything else that you want to add to that chris uh no i mean i i think that um you know, the, the big thing that's going to affect us once we come out of this and for our industry is that a lot of shows that were already planned for the end of the year, now all these shows that are canceled now, they're going to have to, you know, reschedule. A lot of them are going to reschedule, especially the bigger shows. And, you know, hopefully it's not going to stack up too much where it affects, you know, it, it affects the entire the entire industry, you know, and make, and makes it so that it's a bad thing. I don't think that's possible. People are going to be, you know, stuck in their house and they're going to go stir crazy and they're going to want to get out. So I'm sure I, that all I of agree. the con business can be very, very booming when this is, when this is all done. And something that fans constantly ask us is that, uh, there's already shows that are being postponed or canceled, like whether it's Kansas city or Lexington. And a lot of these shows are overlapping now because they're trying to get the summer slots. And we, you know, we will let the fans know uh, who's going to be appearing at each of these shows that we have announced on our page. And if there is a client that was already attending another event before this uh, virus happened, they're going to be attending the original event that was booked first. So, and then we're going to try to rebook them later for the show that you guys probably wanted to see them at. So that's sort of that thing. And, you know, thankfully, Chris and I have such a strong support group right now. We would be nowhere without our team, which is Christy Sproul, Jessica Lauren, Lisa Brown, Gary Lane. Chris Jones. Our, 
Chris Jones, our entire staff has been yeah. by our side. And it's it's a weird time. Like I said, I mean, I we will be honest with you. I think we've lost, uh, I think it's over 21 shows now and over 75 client appearances at different events. Right. You know, that, that that's, you know, that's something that can be hard to swallow. But, you know, we need to all say, we need to stay strong. That's just right. the pure message of it. Well, it's, cer it's certainly a trying time for many people. Uh, many of our friends have told us over the years that we needed to do a show like this uh, that has like the behind the scenes elements to our job. Uh, we debated it for a long, long time. And after a great discussion on this one, because we're just sitting around doing nothing, uh, you know, so, hey, what else are we going to do during an epidemic outbreak? <laughs> Exactly. So, uh, yeah. so we just felt like this was probably the appropriate time to do this. We actually did have this planned before, like many, many months ago. Like, actually, I think we, yeah. what did we first discuss it in like November or something like that? It, we, I, I think it was even farther than that because we, we bought the program and the equipment and right. back in like August. Yeah, we, I mean, we so. tested it a long time ago and then we were like, hey, we're sitting around doing nothing. Let's do it. But this it was funny though because- the last show that we attended before all this happened was in Pensacola and we were standing at the podium waiting for our car and the lady who does transportation, her name is Maria. Yeah. Maria Landy. What, what's oh, her Maria last Landy. name? Landy. Yeah. Maria Landy. Yeah. And so Maria cut over her Nuri and I kind of bickering with each other. Cause we do that. We're, we're, we're like brothers. We're like family. So we just do that. And so we didn't know anybody was listening to us and she called us over. She goes, guys, come here, come here, come here. And we're like, what, what, what happened? Did something bad happen? And she's like, no, no, no. You guys are hilarious. You need you need to have your own show. So that that was kind of like the icing on the cake. And then, you know, this happened. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Voila. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, so, you know, I, I think we should talk sort of about like our history, Chris. Think, you know, how we right. got into this business. Because I don't, a lot of, I don't think we share this a lot with people that, you know, we know. So I think this is sort of our time to share this with the, our audience. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, this being our first episode uh, kind of makes sense to give our backgrounds. People can understand a little bit more of who we are and why we're, I guess, qualified to do what we do. <laughs> um, so basically well, my story, well, well, <laughs> huh? No, I said, What's we'll that? leave that up to them. I said, we'll leave that <laughs> yeah, up to exactly. them. But it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're going to be like, these guys are full of it. They shouldn't be doing this stuff. Uh, right. But no, so basically my background, uh, I have a huge, a huge, huge retail background. Uh, I worked for uh, Sports Authority, GameStop, going to the game, Foot Locker, Lady Foot Locker, Kids Foot Locker, Champs, and a bunch of other companies and all those different companies. I basically was a general manager or a district manager um, a lead associate. And then I also, which leads into what we're doing now, uh, in the nineties, I started working for ESPN and ESPN was, uh, is actually owned by Disney. Not a lot of people know that. And, um, basically, uh, I started working for their retail division, which was Disney sports, uh, marketing. And so when I started working for them, I actually had a, uh, an opportunity to work with a lot of sport, uh, sports guys that, you know, were huge. Uh, I mean, I worked with Magic Johnson. I worked with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, James Worthy, uh, Sandy Koufax. And I actually, believe it or not, uh, God bless his soul, I, I got to do Kobe Bryant's second autograph signing ever, wow. which uh, he was an outstanding human being. And I, I really loved hanging out with him. We actually did three signings with him. And uh, he was he was awesome. So sad to see him pass this year. Um, so that actually introduced me into collecting autographs. I primarily did sports back then. And then as time went on, uh, I always, I always had a, um, like a affinity towards, um, towards the, you know, the voiceover people, because I mean, I love cartoons. I'm an eighties kid. Um, you know, GI Joe transformers. Uh, I mean, you, the, the list is huge. Um, but basically, uh, you know, I, I would go to Q and A's. I would go to uh, podcast uh, recordings. Like if somebody did a live one and they had guests on, I would be like, Hey, this is really cool. So near us here where we live is universal city, uh, universal studios and at their city walk, which is like an outdoor mall. They had the John Lovitz theater and, and Rob Paulson was doing a show there. And, uh, 
we would go, I would go and I actually knew Nuri then and we, he would come with me and it was really cool because when we were at, when it was up at John Lovett's, there was like nobody there. Like it was crazy. We would go to the show and right Nuri, I mean, we would go in there and we're I, like, why is nobody here for it, Bill Farmer? Like what is going it's on? It's incredible. I think we, we, I think we were really ahead of our time, Chris, because it, yeah. I mean, a lot of the people that are now collecting voiceover autographs, I mean, it just did, that that did not exist when we started. So, you know, and we 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 credit Rob Paulson and Talking Tunes many times for you know for sure. starting our our business. And uh, you know, Bill Farmer was that there and some other people. But please continue, Chris. Um. So yeah. So we would go up to the show, and um, one one of the days, and it happened to be this is the funny part about all this. And Nuri, I don't remember what you were doing that day, but. We were gonna. We were planning on going to. They had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reunion. Yeah. And it, for the people that don't know, Rob Paulson played the original Raphael in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So for Christmas time, it was in December. Uh, Rob had a show, and basically, uh, what he did, what he did was he had Toy a, for a, Tots, a, right? Yeah, yeah, like a reunion, and then Toys for Tots was there too, which was really cool. And for me, I'm a huge, uh, you know toy collector i love collecting toys and I, or specifically i like collecting signed toys so i went a little overboard and i bought a bunch of uh a bunch of figures to get signed they actually had the original turtles uh re released in toys r us at the time and basically from there i i was just running around like basically trying to find you know turtle toys everywhere and so one day i was with my nephew kevin and we went to lunch in Burbank and there's a there's a tour uh, there was a Toys R Us there and I walked in and there was a gentleman that worked there that was opening a box of brand new box of turtle toys and I was like whoa um, uh, hey man do you have a, a Krang in there because I couldn't find Krang at all and for the people that don't know Krang is the little slimy guy that's in the in the robot body uh he's pink and so um basically I I couldn't I couldn't find that toy. And, and it, it, I asked the guy like, Hey, do you have any Krangs in there? And he said, yeah, I have, I have four. And I was like, I'll buy them all. I don't care. I'll buy them all. And so I was driving home and on the way home, we stopped. Uh, I, I actually turned to my nephew and I said, Hey, you know, should I get a pen, a pink paint pen for Krang? Because that would look really cool. Cause he's pink. And so basically I stopped at this place that's right up the street here. It's called kit craft. I go get in line, get this pen, and there's a gentleman standing right in front of me. Uh, he gets up to the counter and he asks the lady at the counter, like, hey, I have a mug, like a, you know, like a coffee mug to get signed. What pen should I use? And I'm being the guy I am, I'm like, hey, uh, you know, this is the pen right here. This is an art deco pen. He's like, oh, thanks. And I go turn back to my nephew, Kevin, and I go, uh, it, it, my curiosity got the best of me. I was like, who the heck gets a coffee mug sign? That's so weird and random. So I, I turned to him, I go, hey, you know, what 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 mug are you getting signed? That's so weird. And he's like, he's like, oh, uh, I'm getting a turtle mug signed tonight at this event. And I go, you're going to Rob Paulson's show? He goes, yeah. He turns around, puts his hand out, and he goes, hi, I'm Pat Fraley, the voice of Crank. And I go, what? Like, I just bought a figure at Toys R Us that I've been looking forever for. Just found it on the way home. I just decided to, you know, stop and get a pen, which I'm here to get a pen for you to sign it. And he's like, really? He goes, that's strange. He goes, do you have the toys with you? I'm like, yeah, they're in the car right now. So uh, I ran to the car. Pat, Pat said, go for it. Go grab them. I'll sign them right now. I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. So we're in the store and, and he signs, you know, signs the figures for me. And as we were talking in the back of my brain, I always had it. You know, hey, look, I, I want to do what I did with the sports guys, but with more specifically with voiceover. And so, um, so I, I just right then and there, I was like, whatever, I'm just going to ask because what's the worst that happens? He's going to tell me no. And I, I asked him, I said, hey, do you, you know, I'm starting a company. Do you want to be my first client? And he said, yes, he took the chance on us. And I was like, wow, like so blown away. Such a great guy. We went to the event that night. It went off great. I sat next to him while he was signing autographs after the show. I got almost all my figures signed and all the figures that I didn't have uh, signed, I just donated to Toys for Tots. I figured it was a win-win situation because, you know, I, I like, you know, helping out people too. Plus it's a Marine run uh, organization, which I'm, I, I come from a Marine family. So uh, that was 
I was more than happy to donate. So that's basically where I started. And then, you know, I worked through a bunch of different companies and then I got to this because uh, when I was done with retail, I just didn't want to do it anymore. I don't work for anybody else anymore. I was like, I want to be my own boss. So I started creating different companies. I took a year off. I had enough money. And, and this was one of the Celebworks was one of the companies that I decided to create. And uh, thank God uh, I came across a, a young, hungry, uh, handsome man by the name of Neri Lemus. And uh, I'll let him tell you where what his background is, because that'll lead into where he comes in, too. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm a firm believer in serendipity in life, and I think you do, too, Chris. And, um, you know, I, I had to start working at kind of a young age. I mean, and memorabilia, I was a fan of memorabilia. I enjoyed collecting autographs at a really young age. And when I thought that there was an industry that I could do something with it at 15 or 16, I said, you know what, this is something that's really important to me. And a lot of people, if you know me within my inner circle, I'm a huge, huge film advocate, huge fan of the film industry. It's something that means a lot to me. So luckily, and I'm, we feel, I'm very blessed on where we live, but I would go to a lot of the events, screenings, Q and A's that take place around Los Angeles. So I, you know, I got to meet some of the best in the business at a really young age, whether it was Al Pacino or David Lynch or Francis Ford Coppola, um, Jim Carrey, Tom Cruise, Kim Novak, Nicolas Cage, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you, if you name them, uh, we I probably met them and I'm sure Chris has probably met them. Yeah, and between the two of us. We've between the two of us. Probably almost everybody, I would say. So, so I, I feel like I'm so blessed to be in an industry where I get to see a lot of these you know people that I'm fans of now uh, at these conventions. and. You know, early on, I, you know, ran a couple self-made businesses. I went to film school and I graduated. And, you know, the year that I, or the a couple years before I was going to graduate, you know, I had this inner feeling that I had to have a, a backup plan. Um, and it had to be something within this industry, within the film, it had to be something I wanted. You know, I grew up uh, and I was supposed to be a lawyer. And I was like, you know what? That's just not going to make me happy. And when Chris said, Hey, uh, I I'm thinking of you doing appearances. I have my first client, Pat Fraley. Uh, I want to create a company. Would you like to help out and start something together? I I jumped for it. I said instantly, this is this it works so well. And many of the connections that I made early on in the memorabilia industry at like 15 or 16, whether it was brokering private signings or just you know basically managing memorabilia deals early on they ended up overlapping on the convention side with many of the people that I booked uh, clients with at shows. So I started handling the booking from then on. And five years later, we have over 100 clients. And CelebWorks averages over 300 client appearances a year. Well, yeah. of course, until this year. But that's, <laughs> that's, that, that's, the, that's, that's the say, the, you know, that I digress. But you know, very blessed serendipity. And I'm so glad to have Chris as my business partner because we really do get along. It's, you know, it's, it's a simpatico uh, business relationship. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's, you know, it's honestly, I feel like, I feel like it's uh, not to cut you off there, but I feel like it's, uh, you know, not only are you and I like brothers and your family is like my family, my family is yeah. like yours, but I also feel like our clients that we bring into the fold, uh, you know, we get to know them so well. And I, I certainly Definitely. think of a lot of them like family. I mean, I've been to like, you know, we've been to Brett Iwin's, you know, mom's house, you know, and we've yeah. rode on his brother's train. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, I feel like all those people are family as well. You and, know? you know, and I will say, I think that's a testament to our success in th this industry because many of the clients we have, I mean, like I, like we said, we are friends and family with them. And, yeah. you know, and I think that's why we're so successful at pitching them at shows is because we really have that deep connection for and love for our clients. I mean, there, there's so many clients that I consider, you know, a, a, you know, brothers or, you know, a second, secondary father or whatever. I mean, it's just I, I feel really blessed, whether it's Michael Bell, Alan Oppenheimer, Brett Iwin, if I, I can name them all. We're, we we have this deep emotional connection with all of them. I got I got to cut in. We love you too, Fio and I win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. I love that. Yeah. Um, you know, just really blessed. And uh, you know, I I think that this is going to be a great 
a great way to, to sort of bring our our relationships with our clients into the fold and our relationships in this industry into the fold and bring it to the fans that kind of wanted to know, like, how does this work over the years? Right. Um, and we won't, we won't give up a lot of trade secrets, but no. we'll give you as much insight as we possibly can. And, and, and we're actually planning, I mean, just to give you guys a little heads up of what we're planning on doing with this, obviously it's not going to be just mine and nerdy's cute faces on here. Um, it's going to be, uh, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have guests on. We'll have people that are part of, you know, a part of the industry. Uh, we'll have, um, you know, clients on whenever they, they have the time or, you know, they feel like they want to do it. Um, hopefully if we're on the road, maybe we can do a couple on the road, actually live from a con would be kind of cool. Uh, obviously our equipment will, will give you a heads up. Our equipment won't be as good if we have to do that, but, um, you know, we're, we're going to certainly bring on, uh, you know, the people that we named before, like Christy Sprawl, uh, Jessica, Chris, I mean, our, all our, all our people that help us out, Gary, Lisa, uh, we'll have them on at some point. And, you know, basically like a round table. And, and honestly, we have no uh, scripted portion of this. I mean, other than maybe our intro or outro, but, um, you know, we want, we want to be as honest and straightforward with everybody. Um, and, and kind of, you know, just have fun. I mean, that's what this whole business is about. When I used to work at GameStop, which uh, don't even get me on the subject about GameStop right now. But when I worked there, even though I had a terrible time working there and I don't, I'm not shy about saying, and I didn't, uh, I had a terrible time at GameStop and I don't like that company at all. I used to tell all my employees, I still try to be positive about it. And I'd say, Hey guys, we're selling video games. Like this is fun. So, you know, I feel like this is the same thing for Nuri and I here. I mean, you know, this is fun. This is supposed to be fun for us. It's supposed to be fun for the clients. It's supposed to be fun for the fans. You know, we want to make sure everybody's having a good time. You know, that's what this is all about. Right, Nuri? Agreed, 100%. And, you know, it's, it's once again, I'm glad that we get to do this, Chris. It's, I mean, not many people in the world get to do this. And yeah, it's such a small percentage and thankfully we've made so many friends in this industry that you know it's kind of a cohesive group in this sort of tough time and yeah. you know yeah so we're really excited i think you know i think we should sort of highlight or recap some of the things that we've done recently chris because i mean right yeah. before this uh yeah. epidemic outbreak i mean we just came off two phenomenal shows uh pensacon and galaxy con richmond i mean both run by exceptional people. Galaxy Con Richmond's run by a guy named Michael Broder, who we're in talks right now to have him come on to the show in the next few weeks. And Mike Ensley, who runs Pensacon. And we had over 21 yeah. clients attend two different or three different shows that weekend. And yeah. uh, let's talk a little bit about it. I mean, Pensacon and Galaxy Con Richmond are some of our favorite shows, Chris. And I'm sure we have some stories to talk about. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually went to Nuri and I actually went to Pensacola, which normally we love going to Galaxy Con uh, any, at any city. It doesn't matter because we love how, right. how Mike runs his show. Uh, Mike Broder is a phenomenal promoter, does such a great job. And, and a very uh, good friend. Yeah, he's a really good friend of ours. Uh, equally, I would say uh, Mike Ensley, who does Pensacon, uh, that's the one we went to. And the reason why we decided to go to that one was because uh, you know, it's one that only happened once a year and it happens to be one of our favorite cities to go to, but also, uh, we had a, a lot of clients at that show. Would we have 11 or 12? I no, it was actually, it's actually 15, not counting Brett. 15. Who, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brett, Brett, unfortunately couldn't make it and, and we miss you, Brett, and we love you. Uh, yes. but basically that show, we, we always try to go to that one because, uh, we feel like Mike you know, he runs such a clean ship over there. Like it's just insane how efficient everything is there. We never have to worry about anything. Um, it's a tremendous show. I mean, if anybody, you know, wants to go to a show and have a lot of fun, uh, that's a, such a great show to go to. Um, we, we like going to, uh, also going because one of our favorite restaurants is, yeah. uh, right there. And, um, for the life of me, it's, <laughs> I always it, forget the name. 
It's McGuire's, Chris. Yeah, uh, here we go, McGuire's. Thank you. I don't know why. I always forget the name. I'm a, I'm a ding dong that way. I don't know why. But uh, we love that restaurant. And if you guys are ever in Pensacola, please go to McGuire's. It is so phenomenal. The food is tremendous. They have live music. And it's really cool because on the ceiling, they actually have it covered. Just go Google the place, you know, McGuire's, Pensacola. They'll have pictures of it. They have dollar bills like literally the entire restaurant is dollar bills on the ceiling it's like you can't even see anything but dollar bills it's crazy but it's yeah. such a cool restaurant and a cool fact about that is they have to count and clean well they clean numerous times the money numerous times a year but they have to yeah. count it every year and report it to the irs as you know uh you know money that they have as holdings and i think that's incredible because Oh my God, I feel bad for the, the poor guy who has got to go <laughs> yeah. and count People every single <laughs> dollar bill or clean it. Jeez, you know. Yeah, that's great. Another restaurant that I have to say in, Pens in Pensacola, Chris, that we have to shout out to is the Fish House. Fish House, uh, yeah. Fish House is by, amazing. It's, it's run by Collier, and uh, he he's yeah. incre one of the best uh, businessmen I've ever met in my life. And he is uh, actually going to be this upcoming year a co-owner of Pensacon, which oh wow, that that's that. phenomenal. And we took our clients there a, a couple of nights, and we had just a phenomenal time. George Newburn, Richard Karn, Maria Canals well, Barrera. We, I mean, we they also all had a great to time. His other his other restaurant, right? It was Jackson's. called Jackson's. Oh Jackson's my Steakhouse. God. I got to tell you, man. Wow. I mean, the whole wow. time, poor, poor Nuri's on his keto diet, and we're sitting there eating, yeah. and we're like, oh, my God, this is the best dessert I've ever had. Poor Nuri's. I wish I, like, I, oh. wish, I wish I had the video, but I filmed that video. I don't know if you remember. Literally, I was cornered, surrounded by dessert everywhere. And you know what? And, I, and we, all, I, we were all like, oh, yeah, this is after oh, point, we realized so we were good. being over the top. We are like, oh, this is terrible. This yeah, is no, so I, I terrible. Think, I, think, I think that made it worse because I'm looking at, like, from <laughs> – Looking at brownie Sunday, and I'm looking. Everything is surrounding me, and everybody's yeah. going, "This is terrible." Oh, Nary, oh, you would have so loved, you would have hated this. And then they <laughs> ate the whole thing, so it was yeah. very funny. We we had a great time, and I mean, to have that many clients in a, a room, Chris. You know, I I mean, we've had them at the Fish House, we had them at McGuire's. It it really was this testament or moment that I had sitting there and going, "My God, this was what all the work." what you know it was worth it after five years you know right oh yeah absolutely i mean you sit there and you kind of sit back and enjoy you know the moments and you know the that's the rewards basically is you get to sit back and you know have a good time and hang out and you know do those kinds of things so a hundred percent and one of the things that i will say is that i'm pretty proud of it is was this, it was the first time we got michael gray and john davy at a show yeah, uh, yeah, and we, you know, that for was for the people big... that don't know Michael Gray and John Davy, they are from the 1976 show Shazam, and they played Michael Gray played Billy Batson, and John Davy played Shazam. And if you haven't I ever wish watched I had the it, shirt. you can watch it on. Uh, what's that? I wish I had the shirt. I wish I had Michael Gray. Oh, shirt. I know. Yeah, we're, we're, one of these days, we'll have Michael on, and we'll put on the. We're gonna put the on cool the shirt. Billy That's Batson exactly shirt, right? what we're gonna do. I love <laughs> you know, it. We're gonna I do love that. it. Totally, yeah, I agree. My, Michael, yeah. if you're watching, we're warning you right now. You're going to be on, and we're all going to wear the shirts together. We'll it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. you know, that it was also another uh, highlight of that weekend was that we, for the first time, uh, not that we represent Richard Horvitz, we don't, but we got together the first time a Billy and Mandy, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy reunion at yep. Galaxy In Con Richmond. Richmond. So yeah. Greg, Greg Eagles and Gray Delisle, who were under our representation for that event, uh, they came out and it was a stellar success. I mean, it was the first time it had, had ever been done at a show. So we were really excited to make that happen and have a small part right. in making that happen. You know, I don't, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that show, but it ran in the early 2000s. I actually watched that show, you know, throughout school. And that for me, I was very sad that I couldn't be there, but it was so wonderful to sort of have a, uh, you know, a part in making that happen. Well, we also at Richmond had a client that we're very, very protective of that we didn't, we weren't there to protect him this time, but we had the capable Christy Sproul there. Uh, but Oppie, Alan Oppenheimer was there. 
and uh, Oppie's are near and dear to our hearts. Like uh, he's just such an outstanding human being, and we love that man to death. He's so by far a part of our family. It's like ridiculous. And Philip Glasser was there too. We had, yep, I mean, he, he he had a great time, and and hopefully that he'll be appearing at you know some future Galaxy Cons if we can make that happen. I I I. You know, he had a really wonderful time, and that was, that's the great thing about our ability to have people under our representation, Chris, is that we're able to bring people to quality shows, you know, around the U.S. that, you know, normally that people wouldn't understand what a real Comic-Con is. And thankfully, GalaxyCon, uh, GalaxyCon events run by Mike Broder and Sandy Martin and Pensacons uh, run by uh, Mike Ensley and now Collier. Um, those are quality events and we're, you know, we're just right. happy to bring our right. clients to those events. Yeah. And any, any promoter that really wants to see how to run smooth shows. I mean, you just go right. to go to one or both of those shows, go to, you know, a galaxy con show, go to a Pensacola show. I mean, they're, they're like clockwork. It's amazing. Like we never have to worry about anything with those guys and that, that, I mean, do making our jobs easier is certainly the best because then, we can pay attention to our clients a little bit more and make sure that they're, you know, happy and, you know, making sure that they can, you know, enjoy themselves with the fans because we don't, you know, we don't want them to be in a grumpy mood. They're just like everybody else, you know, they'll get in a grumpy mood if something happens and, you know, you got to kind of shake that off when it comes to dealing with the public. I had to do that a lot with, you know, uh, any kind of retail that I worked in. I mean, you know, you sometimes you don't understand that like maybe the last customer cussed us out, you know, and then and then the next person comes in, you're gonna be like, "Hi, how you doing?" And it's it's really difficult. I know Nuri struggles with that because I actually have that ability. But um, you know, I I, uh, I actually am, am trying to help him with it a little bit. I I will say I'm not gonna lie. I have not mastered the element of small talk. That's not something that I've ever. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not proud that I haven't. But it's something that I'm constantly working on and. Uh, you know, there's just, I think there's topics that, you know, I, it just, I just depends on the situation, but yes, Chris is working on trying to help me, uh, build a little <laughs> bit more that. of the small talk it's element. So if no, you guys want to come up to dude. me, if you want to come up to me and talk to me, I will be more than happy to give it a shot <laughs> and hopefully not make it any awkward for you. Uh, but you know, and I, you know, we're happy. I mean, Chris, there's many times where you, you and I have people walk up to us and have seen our faces on Facebook and stuff. And, right. you know, they walk up and want to talk to us and say, how did you get into this? And hopefully this show will help them understand sort of the behind the scenes stuff that may will maybe inspire some people uh, right. if they want to get in this industry. And, you know, this is a weird time to get in the industry, of course, but at any time where it does bounce back and it will, uh, that they have the ability to come check out our videos and stuff and sort of figure it out and stream streamline and create their own method and approach to it. Yeah. And we'll have, and we'll have, you know, promoters on and we'll have uh, yeah. actually other, we'll have other agents, other people that do what yep. we do because, you know, for a lot of us, we, you know, this industry is very, very difficult because, you know, it is kind of like the wild west where, you know, you yeah. got a you got a couple spots at a show, and you got to get these people in, and you got somebody else that wants more spots, and you yeah. know, obviously, it, it deals with their livelihood, and it makes sense. But the people that we know that are do what we do, you know, we're friends with, it makes it a lot easier because we kind of watch each other's backs, and we make 100%. it so that, yeah, we make it so that uh, you know they you know they know that if you know something happens and they need a little bit of extra backup, they got us there to help them. You know, right. And there, and there is certainly really good at that. You know, he get, takes pictures with people wearing the same hat as him. And <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's, uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, you know, and that's one of the things with me is that, yeah, I, I, you, you know, this Chris, and this is one of the reasons why I didn't do agree to do the show earlier is that I like to be very private in that sense. And it's right. I mean, yeah. over the last couple months, I've, I've changed, as you know, this, uh, that I feel like I'm more comfortable with coming out and doing some, you know, sh show, I mean, you know, doing online stuff. Uh, and I was really hesitant for the longest time. Um, right. But I I'm glad that we're doing this. It really, I think it's going to help a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, um, you know, it'll especially help 
uh, whenever we have events that are coming up, we can talk to people and let them know, you know, if they have any questions, um, basically about, you know, like how we're going to handle things or, you know, for example, I think that a, a big one that a lot of people actually ask us about, right, is this started to, um, you know, this whole COVID-19 thing started coming in. Uh, it happened right before we went to Pensacola and it was kind of like a small thing at that point. And people were asking us like, well, you know, what about taking pictures with people or, you know, can we shake their hand? And, you know, everybody was doing the chicken wing thing where they, yeah. you know, their elbow and, burp, burp, you know, <laughs> uh, which, I mean, that's not terrible. You know, it, like people like me that freak out when you touch your hands anyways, it kind of helps. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I but actually yeah, have no. a I have a quick funny story about that if I you know oh, no. but uh, we were in Pensac we were in Pensacola and uh, a fan you know this is in the middle of the you know COVID nineteen scare and somebody walks up to one of our clients' tables and I was ha relieving one of the volunteers that was taking the money for somebody and the guy walks up and really sweet sweet kid I, he I, I got you know he was a kid he was young uh probably 15 and I know he didn't mean to do it, but he walks over, hands me the money and accidentally coughs in my face. And I literally, <laughs> I, I had to, I had to keep my composure and not freak out. <laughs> and I say, thank you so much. Uh, and I took his money and he got his autograph. But as soon as the volunteer ran, I ran to the restroom to wash, wash my face. But it was kind of, <laughs> kind of funny. It was kind of funny, but yeah, no, it's definitely, yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. You know that moment in the Twilight Zone where you know you just have like ah, you know that's exactly I, what. I happened. think it was more like in Aliens when when they shoot one of them and the acid would come out. Oh, and they're screaming that's they got exactly the acid on it. Them. Ex exactly. <laughs> it. Like, ah! <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the practices of many of these agents that have clients at these shows and it's going to change how the celebrity interacts with it. And our job, Chris, is going to try to prevent uh any awkwardness between a fan and a celebrity. So, you right. know, don't be, don't be surprised that at, fu at future comic cons, you see signs basically saying, Hey, minimal contact, minimal, you know, touching, uh, hugging was yeah. already getting a little weird. Um, but I think some of that stuff is going to slow down. And until we have an idea of where this outbreak's going, uh, right. I think a lot of this con uh, minimal contact is going to be definitely a thing. Um, and but you know it, our guys are still going to be friendly. Don't 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 be scared and don't feel like it's going to be a weird interaction. It's just you know we're just going to be doing the fist bump or whatever you know. We'll do the hokey pokey around you know giving a, a handshake. Um, and I, I think it'll be I always, fine. I always feel like the the kind of rule of thumb whenever you go to a show, anyways, is that you should always ask before you do something. And you know if you think it's out of the ordinary. Or if you think that there might be a problem with it, if you see like, you know, a handler or somebody that's an agent, I would call them over and be like, hey, I just got a quick question for you. You know, is it okay if I shake Mr. You know, so Mr. Ray Lemus's hand and Mary would be like, no, and run away. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's always, it's always good to ask, you know, like it, it never hurts to ask if you can do something because then you know, basically, you know, you don't come into that situation where you kind of look like the bad guy because you're not listening or you're not right. doing something that's kind of part of the protocol, you know? So, I mean, always good to do that for sure. Definitely. Um, Chris, I think uh, we kind of have like, um, did you want to do maybe a show and tell of sort of an idea? Yeah. Yeah. Show and tell. Woo. Okay. Woo. So this is something we came up with last night. Uh, Mary and I were kind of spitballing ideas about what we should do for the show. And we kind of want to, you know, kind of keep it a little live and, and show you like cool stuff. Uh, and so basically what, one of the things I thought of was, I thought it'd be cool because, I mean, as you can tell behind me here, like I have like a ton of comic books, um, but we are actually fans and collectors also. And our collections, as you can imagine, are pretty extensive and pretty insane. It, I feel kind of bad when I see people showing off their pieces and I sit there in my head go, uh, yeah, if you just saw what I have. And I, and I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to do that. But uh, at the same time, I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you guys some of our rare pieces or things that we think that are cool in our collections. 
So I'll let Nuri start off by with our first show and tell. I know you have a piece that you want to yeah, show off. Yeah, I do, I'm and cool. I'm 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 kind of proud of it. Um, when we started our our company, Chris, it, you know, uh, five years ago, I I think one of the shows that you and I really cared about was Batman the Animated Series. That that yeah, was something oh, yeah. that. I mean, if you guys don't know, have not seen Batman the Animated Series and you call yourself a Batman fan, you need to, you know, after this show, stop what you're doing, go on Amazon or DC streaming and go watch Batman the Animated Series. And, uh, you know, representing Lauren Lester, Diane Pershing, and now we uh, have access to Arlene Sorkin and some of these Arlene. other... Yeah, John, uh, John we Glover. Have, yeah, we we we've had access uh, for uh, to John Glover through Byron Burden. Um, that I I feel like that we were blessed to create sort of these cast reunions and help out, uh, you know, in a large part to try to put these cast reunions that shows all around the country. Chris, I think we've done over thirty five, forty, you know, Batman animated series cast reunions, and they were touring yeah. for you know, several years, um, whether with Kevin Connery, who's not our client, but, uh, you know, we, we got a good group of people together. So as soon as I had the ability to buy this, I started my own cast piece and, you know, it's signed by Kevin Conroy and Clive Revel, who is the first Alfred, Adrian Barbeau, Lauren Lester, John Glover, uh, Diane Pershing, Paul Williams, Arlene Sorkin, I think I covered it. And then I actually Paul have an Dini, index card. Andrea Romano. Oh, Paul Dini, Andrea Romano. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're on so. they're on his cape there. Yep. Yep. They're on so, his on his cape. So I'm pretty I'm pretty proud of this piece. I mean everything I think that's an awesome piece, man. Yeah, everything we collect, I mean, stuff like this is sort of a testament to how far we've come. So it's kind of yeah. neat to have it. And and funny note is that Laura Lester was our second client ever. Yep. In, yeah, we got him, we got him because I should, actually misprinted our photos for the first show that we did with Pat Fraley. I thought that Pat Fraley did the voice of Barbecue in GI Joe. Yep. And of course, IMDb was wrong, so I printed the wrong photo and he said, "Hey Chris, I'm friends with Lauren." Uh, would you like to talk to him? Maybe he'll sign your photos. And I'm sitting there thinking like, well, dude, I have a whole stack of photos here. So when I ended up talking to him, he was like, well, I, I would love to do the shows. And I was like, what, what? You're not doing shows like Kevin Conroy is. It's like seeing we Adam were, West without Burt Ward. Like, exactly. Flabber, flabbergasted. And yeah. when he Nuri said that, like, let's do it. Shocked. You know, and when, when, you know, if you know, Lauren Lester's career, phenomenal actor, um, you know, he's he was he started at a really early age with like horror films like Evil Speak, Rock and Roll High School. I mean, he's just very versatile, and people know him as the quintessential Robin and Nightwing, the quintessential yep. Dick Dick Grayson in our in the animated DC universe. So, I mean, he's a stellar guest to have it at any show, and we're happy to have him on our roster. Yeah, I I agree, and he he the thing about him that. I love is that when he goes to shows, he likes to walk around. <laughs> He's like a walker. So he likes to go to shows, but he appreciates every city he goes to because he finds out whatever he can about the city. Like what I, I think it was in Des Moines. We're in like Des Moines, I Iowa. And uh, he called me like real early and I was like, Oh God, what's this? He's like, yeah, I'm walking around. He'd already seen all this great stuff. And when we went to Cleveland together, we went to the Rock and Roll I'm, Hall of Fame. And I'm we so had a sorry. blast. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I never didn't get to go to those, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately not. But yeah. it's fun. That's okay. So I, I, never, cool I, never liked, I never liked flying, so it doesn't matter. The fact that I yeah. even get on an airplane today still shocks me. But other than that, yeah. you know, it Nuri, is it Nuri, is. Is, Nuri is my Mr. T to I am his, uh, you know, his Murdoch. <laughs> in, yeah, uh, exactly. in uh, a team i gotta i gotta put him out and get him on the plane <laughs> uh, yeah it's i mean it is an interesting thing i mean you know my first experience getting on an airplane chris was kind of like i mean that was tough you yeah, know I videotaped it, you. <laughs> for, the, for, the, for many of you guys that don't know but the, the first couple years it was really hard i mean we've done this for five years now and we're going on and on to our sixth sixth year uh yeah. getting onto a plane to me there's no, in my mind, the first couple of years, there's no way. So Chris actually attended every show the first two years. 
And I'm internally grateful because I was not ready <laughs> to get on an airplane. It's my pleasure. I'm, I'm glad we and, could get you to the point where you could go. Yeah. And then in Knoxville, I, I think it was three and a half years ago, uh, in Knoxville, I had booked so many clients at that event. And it was the first time that the cast of G.I. Joe, the animated series, that we got, you know, uh, some of our uh, higher, you know, talented roster at that show. And I said, there's no way that I couldn't be there to celebrate. I, I had to be there to celebrate that moment. Um, yeah, that was a so good show I, too. It was the only time that I was like, okay, I got to do this. I got an airplane. I took my drugs and I, I flew. And there's a, <laughs> there's a video that maybe we'll show you at another time of me freaking out on the airplane in, internally. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, oh, so anyways, we did. We have to get to my piece, my yes. uh, show and tell piece. So I figured since it was appropriate, I told the story and I'm, uh, trust me, I will try not to repeat stories here. I have a lot of them. Every once in a while, I will have one. Nuri's job is to stop me if I'm repeating the story and we'll just say, oh, that was back in episode one when you told the Pat Fraley story. And I'm a so rolling so that's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Nuri, Nuri will remember. He's like he's like a Rolodex. It's, it's he'll, he'll know. So, anyways, here's mine. That's my that's my Krang, my my infamous Krang figure that I got signed. And so I think I'm what I'm gonna have to do with this one is I'm gonna have to probably get it. Um, I'm probably gonna have to get it like encased. You know how the the toy guys grade them. Our, you maybe can do I'll it get Robert our, Mays. Send yeah, we'll get our, our buddy Robert Mays at APG to do it um he's awesome he does a good job so we're gonna probably do that and maybe get a, a little thing on here it says like you know first day of celeb works on it or something that'd be kind of cool That's kinda but nice. if you if you That's ever nice. see the picture of me and pat fraley uh from when i first started the company this is the figure i'm holding in the picture so this one's kind of one of very very close to my heart action figures that i own and you'll get to see some more stuff as we go on we have plenty of things to show you it's insane um so I think we're approaching the end, right? Are we getting to that point, Ner? Uh, well, I, I, I think we, I, we. Let me. Let's just check before we jump off. Let's check some of the uh, questions. Oh yeah, yeah. That, we promised uh, to see you know, if we would that are go up. through any questions here. Okay. Uh, I, I just I threw it on the screen, Chris. I don't know if you could see it, but Saki the sock puppet says, "Please bring <laughs> Brett Iwan to Ace Comic Con Midwest this October. I'd love to meet him. We would love to book him there. You know, we actually yeah, we, we know would, Stephen we Sheamus. We would love we would love to book him there, and hopefully we can make that happen for you. And then he goes, "I would love to meet Bill Farmer, Goofy. Also, we would love to Phenomenal bring him there. Also, being. yeah, Phenomenal, one of the best. Him. him and Jen Farmer, exceptional." uh beth longo says hi chris are you staying safe i think he is staying safe beth hi i'm in my and i'm then, in my room i'm okay <laughs> mary holly oh, hi, mary. Uh, yeah, oh God, yeah, from chris from australia that's cool australia we got somebody from australia chris you know yes. <laughs> down under that's terrific we're, we're, we're international <laughs> uh fiona says love you we love you too fiona oh, i love you fiona Matt, we hope to see you in Louisville also. And, uh, you know, yeah. hopefully we can make that, you know, get to see you again. Uh, let's see. What uh, what other things are coming on? Once asked, uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to see. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, well, there's yeah. one funny thing. Uh, Billy Celio says uh, uh, that he's got a friend called Mike the Fanboy and wants to know if we'll be signing Michelle Pfeiffer soon. Uh, you have a, <laughs> do you have a number we will call it yeah you have, we'll call you have it a, we'll bring yeah we'll call it not a problem <laughs> you have the number billy we'll make it happen so that would be amazing I, and i think that's pretty much it i think that's i think those are the the comments and questions for the day and anytime that we have a show please feel free to write comments in our our live video and we'll try to answer them at the end yeah absolutely uh so before we take off, we want to tell you a few things. Uh, our show will be planned for every Sunday uh, at this at the same time as it was today at 5 p.m. Pacific Pacific time, uh, at least until our con schedule uh, gets back on the map. Uh, obviously, that'll change it a little bit, or we might move it to a different day of the week so that it doesn't correspond. But we both thought about it and thought it'd be kind of cool to do it at a con. Uh, that'd be kind of fun because then we can bring somebody that's there with us on, and you guys can you know see some cool people other than us. Uh, but anyways, 
Uh, once again, I am Chris Arsaga, and in the words of the immortal Tony Stark, I love you 3,000. And this has been Nary Lamus, just leaving you with this small reminder that you always keep your feet on the ground, always reach to the stars, and never forget to stay inspired. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone.